customization in the new Forza Motorsport game is unbelievably controversial. Some people say they love it a whole bunch, and other people say they hate it so much they will never play the game. Well, I got to play the new Forza Motorsport early. I played it for about 15 hours, so today I wanted to share my thoughts with you on the new customization so let's talk about it. On my previous video, I got some interesting comments. And today, I wanted to address some of them. And let's start things off with all of the new customization and the new tuning options in the new Forza Motorsport. Because there's actually some really cool stuff in here. When you go to buy a car in this game, you'll see that there's like this, a Mustang GT, a Civic Type R. These are just the options for the series I'm in right now. I've already gone in and I've driven a Ford Mustang all the way up to level 50. And you can see down in the bottom left, your Ford discount is 5% because I've got one car to level 50. Instead of the Mustang costing me 88,000 credits, it's only going to cost me 83,000 credits. What's actually really cool about the new Forza Motorsport, though, is it actually has some new customization options that we can use for our cars. For example, if you've only played Forza Horizon, restrictor plates are in Motorsport. This was something that was in Forza Motorsport 7 on some cars, but every car I've driven in this game has actually had restrictor plate. A restrictor plate essentially reduces the amount of horsepower your engine can produce for example this honda civic type r 306 horsepower bone stock but if you toss the restrictor plate on the horsepower drops to 235 so if you're trying to get your car into a specific class that restrictor plate can be a great way to do it all the rest of the engine upgrades are exactly the same as they've been in previous forza games there is no anti-lag available for your turbos in this game though when we get to performance and handling that's where we've actually got some new stuff for example ballast ballast is essentially extra weight that you can add to your car to make it heavy. For example, with no ballast on the Honda Civic, it's 3,117 pounds. If we go extra light ballast, that adds what, like 80 pounds to the car. Lightweight ballast, medium ballast, heavy ballast, and extra heavy ballast. We go up to three and a half thousand pounds. Jeez. So again, if you're going for a build that you want to have like in a specific class, ballast can be a great way to do it. And unfortunately, the tire compounds are exactly the same as they have been in Forza Motorsport games previously. They haven't got the same upgrades as Forza Horizon. All there is is street tires, sport tires, race tires, and drag tires. There are no drift tires, there are no semi-slick tires, and there aren't even any tire compounds with tire letters around the side to kind of make your car look a little cooler, which I found kind of surprising. If we jump over to the Aero, there are actually some new bits and bobs for this Honda Civic. Well, ignore the Forza Aero there and ignore the Forza Aero in the front, but you could actually see a new like tow hook design, which I think looks pretty good actually. We've also got a modified rear bumper for this thing where we could add another tow hook to the back of the car. Again, looks pretty cool. And last but not least, the hood. We can add on some hood pins. When you toss drift suspension on, you have the ability to cut customize your steering angle, which is so cool from 40 degrees all the way up to 60 degrees of steering angle. And you also have an option of messing around with your roll center height offset and your anti-geometry percent. I haven't actually messed around and experimented with exactly what these do in the game and what everything feels like. I'm going to have to do that when the game actually comes out. All of that stuff sounds awesome, and I'm super excited to dig into it, experiment with it, and see what types of builds we can do in the new Forza Motorsport game. But, and it's a big but, the new customization also has some massive flaws. So let's talk about that. If we are gonna do that though, I feel like it's only fair to get everybody caught up to speed on how the new customization already works. If you already know how it works, feel free to skip to this time in the video. The long story short is the new Forza Motorsport game doesn't give you the freedom to upgrade your cars the way you want to. Everything revolves around car level. Every single time you're driving your car around the circuit, every time you take a corner, you'll get a small amount of car XP. Every time you overtake an opponent, you'll get a small amount of car XP. And as you accumulate enough XP, your car will level up. Here's a full list of what upgrades unlock at what level. Small upgrades like an exhaust and brakes unlock at level one. 
bigger upgrades like suspension, tire compounds, and rear wing. Those unlock a little bit later. If you want to do weight reduction or swap a turbo onto your car, your car is going to need to be level 20. And if you want to do even bigger upgrades than that, like an engine swap, your car is going to need to be level 40. If you want to toss a wide body kit on, it's going to need to be level 45. And if you want to change the drivetrain for your car and make your car like rear wheel drive or all wheel drive, your car is going to need to be level 50. And if you want to get your car all the way up to level 50, it'll take you about two and a half to three hours to do it. I'm sure there's going to be players who figure out a faster way to do it, but on average, two and a half to three hours per car. Car levels are also car dependent. So if you go in and level up a Ford Mustang all the way up to level 50, you're going to need to do that again when you buy a Mazda MX-5 or a Ferrari or like a Nissan or a whatever. It actually goes so far as if you buy a duplicate Ford Mustang, you're also going to need to level that up to level 50 as well. So if you wanted two of them, one like a drift car and one a race car, you would actually need to spend six hours upgrading those two cars. And last but not least, car upgrades aren't the only thing you actually get every time you level up. You also get a small amount of car points. You actually get 400 car points for every time you level up. And those car points is what you spend on car upgrades. You no longer spend credits to upgrade your car, which is actually pretty cool. Certain upgrades, for example, tire compounds, if you wanna to toss drag tires on your car, that costs 1,700 car points. And if you want to do an engine swap, I've seen those go from anywhere from 2,000 all the way up to 5,000 car points. So you need to budget accordingly if you've got minimal car points to spend. So now that everybody's caught up to speed on car customization in Forza Motorsport, I think we can talk about. In my last video, I was very negative on this car leveling process. I actually said that it's one of the worst things ever added to any Forza game. And some of the people who watched my video were very offended that I said that and left some interesting comments. So I wanted to talk about those comments. Let's do that now. This user said the leveling system is made so that you don't put a twin turbo and race weight reduction and destroy all events in an instant. This isn't actually correct. In Forza Motorsport, the AI will actually scale their performance to match your performance. So if you go in and you drive a Ford Mustang that's bone stock, the AI will choose similar performance level cars so you can have a fair and level race. But if you decide before the race to go in and upgrade your car with twin turbos and race weight reduction, the AI will also upgrade their cars to match your performance level. Essentially, locking upgrades to certain levels has zero impact on you destroying the AI or not because they will always match your performance level. They're set up to always give you a fair and competitive race when you're racing in career mode. Somebody also left this comment. Interesting, because what you would call the worst, I call amazing because it gives you a form of progression, something that was missing in a Forza Motorsport game badly. I agree. Forza needs progression, both on the Forza Motorsport side and both on the Horizon side. I've been saying this for years and you've probably been saying this for years as well. What I've been asking for is a career progression similar to what we had in like Forza Motorsport 3 and Forza Motorsport 4, where you started off in lower end cars. I called them dishwasher cars and then earned your way up through the ranks of racing and actually achieved something. So when you jump into a faster car, it feels good and it feels like you earned it. What nobody asked for was for a car progression system, a system that forces you to drive an inferior car to the car that you actually want to drive. When in previous Forza games, you would have just spent credits and upgraded to weight reduction or tossed a little bit more horsepower on it when you felt the car needed it, not being forced into something less desirable. I actually wanted to feature two very interesting comments of things that I actually didn't even consider before, but you guys pointed it out to me. Somebody said this upgrade system will make everyone choose the OP cars and stick with it and not exploring other cars to test their abilities and try other cars that isn't as fast, but just as fun. That is so true, and I didn't even think of it. If you have a limited amount of time to play the new Forza Motorsport game, and you're one of those people who wants to win every single race you enter, you're gonna be forced to look up like YouTube guides or read articles on what the fastest cars are in specific tracks and classes. You're essentially gonna be forced into driving that specific car and leveling it up to level 50, and in the process of doing so, 
you're just going to be slower than everybody else for like a good three hours, regardless of your skill, which I mean on the surface is already a little bit unfair, but it also means that you're going to be forced into that car, which removes all the uniqueness and variety of Forza Motorsport, which is kind of disappointing. Somebody else left this comment saying, mind you, to unlock a body kit, which is totally cosmetic, not exactly true. Sometimes they can make your tires a little bit wider to give you extra performance, but anyways, you have to be level 45. You can't even fully upgrade a car for photos. That is 100% true as well, and I totally didn't think about that either. Forza photographers are a massive community out there. People who literally only play the game to take photos of cars and it actually even extends further because you can also include painters in that same like scenario that same group if you're a painter out there sometimes you might need to paint a car that has a wide body kit which will again force you to be level 45 with your car and that's just so frustrating for those people who like taking photos or like just making paint jobs. I know some people out there might be saying, erg, but the new Forza Motorsport is erg, all about racing. And yeah, but there's also people out there who like taking photos and like making paint jobs. You can't just ignore them. And I feel like if you are ignoring them, you're turning off a big part of the community which just sucks. The last comment I'm gonna feature in this video is this. Somebody goes on to say, I think the upgrade system is meant to make it feel like real life progression. I then get some bad English, but I think what they're saying here is essentially the more you race slowly, you build up money and can upgrade your car, which yes, is true, but this system isn't that. In real life, if you have the money, you can buy any upgrade you want. Imagine walking into a tire store and being like, hey, I really want those super grippy tires. And they were like, no, you're not level 20. Leave. <laughs> no, that's not how it works. If I have enough money, I can buy any upgrade I want. And I think this is the real disconnect for me. The thing that truly makes no sense at all about the new Forza Motorsport customization. This game prides itself on realism but this upgrade system isn't realistic at all. As some of you may know, I've been doing a lot of real life racing this year. And one of the things you do to a real life car to make it faster for the cheapest amount of money possible is to do weight reduction. You get a hammer and a screwdriver and you remove 90% of the interior. But in the new Forza Motorsport game, you need to be level 20. And that just, that doesn't make sense. And here's where I think it gets even more confusing because Forza Motorsport marketing has been priding itself recently on having a massive roster of cars. They've literally been revealing cars for weeks. They've even got DLC for more cars for the game before the game has even come out. They're literally going in and dangling all of these cars in front of you, but you can't think of driving them the way you want to unless you go and do mindless grinding. Oh, and it is actually a mindless grind. All of the driving that you've seen in today's video has been auto drive. Forza Motorsport actually has assists built into it that will steer the car for you, shift gears for you, brake for you, and accelerate for you. And if you turn all of them on, the car will just drive itself. And what that means is if you see somebody online driving a level 50 car, it doesn't mean that they spent three hours driving a car around to learn all the ins and outs. It might, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. They might have just left their Xbox or their PC on to get a level 50 car so they could have the freedom to upgrade it how they wanted. And that is the definition of a mindless grind, not a well thought out progression system, a system that truly just forces you or the AI to drive your car for three hours. It doesn't matter how good you are. All that matters is how long you sit there for. In the comments on my previous video though, a couple of people mentioned, well, I say mentioned, a couple of people were leaving hate comments on my video, essentially attacking me because I was making fun of the progression system because I didn't offer any ways for improvement. So I'm gonna do that in this video. I made a list, so let me read off my list. Number one, car levels are kind of cool. It kind of shows you what cars that people are actually driving or at least having the AI drive. I think car levels should stay, but the developers should actually make them uncapped. I would love to look back in a couple of years and be like, wow, I remember driving that car. That's why it's level 273. I have so many good memories. Plus, for the people out there who love doing like endurance racing, it'd be so cool to see 
how many levels you could gain in like a 24 hour race. That would be sick. But I don't think car upgrades should actually be tied to car levels at all. Instead of locking upgrades to certain levels, why don't we just use car points instead? That way you're still incentivized to level your car all the way up so you can get all of the car points, but all of the upgrades would be unlocked right away. You're driving your car and it's level two and you notice, oh, my car feels a little heavy. Why don't we go and do some weight reduction? It gives you the freedom to upgrade your car how you want and sorta kinda when you want as long as you have the car points necessary. If you wanna take that a step further, I think it'd be really cool if car points instead of being tied to the specific car were actually tied to whether it be a manufacturer or to a car class. So all of the cars in that specific class you had the car points for after you've upgraded one of them. That'd be a way better system. So there you have it. Those are my thoughts on Forza Motorsport customization and why this is the worst system ever added to a Forza game. I hope the developers do something about it because I think some of the ideas I mentioned here are just a lot better. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.